Okay, I'm going to reset the space because that should say educators workshop, educational tips. So let me reset the space and hopefully this will resolve this. Fingers crossed. Educational <laughs> events. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. We're all on the same. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just love it. All right. Well, welcome everyone here. This is fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. this is the Educators in VR Weekly Workshop. Oh, yeah. right, right. We are here. And I'm going to mute everyone so I can then be the center of attention. Now, the reality is we mute everybody so that um, the uh, you can hear. We don't have all the background noises from everybody's microphones and people coming in and saying weird things. So I want to thank you all for being here. This is amazing. And um, this is every week we have these great events uh, here in Altspace where we teach. We have special speakers. And we teach you all about the joy that is happening here in integrating VR, AR, XR into education. All right. Now, y'all know what's coming up next week, right? 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 Yay! The Educators in VR International Summit is coming next week. It will be flooding the all space calendar here starting this afternoon a little in just a few hours there's been a few little technical glitches in getting that up onto the schedule but i want to thank everybody who's been patient and our whole schedule is at educatorsinvr.com so that's where our schedule is you can check that out there and we're going to be adding them here to alt space so lewis are you okay just checking okay all right so I want to thank my great mods that are here helping everybody out and um, this is going to be um, we're going to have a, a really quick session and then if we have time I'm going to take you on a tour. So what, what today's event today's presentation is about is looking at I've been in all space for almost for about five years and I've been presenting for several years here and have learned a lot of lessons. So I'm going to show some of the tips and tricks that I've learned about creating and hosting an educational event in VR and specifically here in Allspace. Does that sound like a, what you're here for? Does that sound like a plan? All right. I love those emojis. Bring them on. All right. So I want you to think about what defines an educational space. And hello to everybody in room two. I'm glad you're here. Yay. So what defines an educational space? Um, that's It's pretty interesting when I started to really question what does that mean? What's an educational space? What defines it? And is it a traditional classroom? Is it a library? When you're taking the, an educational space into the VR, what does that mean? Well, I found that when I present and do educational workshops in event spaces like this, people are uncomfortable. In fact, people are sitting in these seats here, people are really uncomfortable. Why? Because you can't feel where the chair is and you, and people like to move around. They like to, to fidget and stuff and, and it just doesn't quite work. So what happened is that I learned that these actually confine us in VR. They don't work for a really, you know, you think they would because it's familiar, but it just doesn't quite work. So what does, we, we just found there were too many limitations and too many distractions as people would wander over and touch things and look at things and try to pick them up and do things and fiddle with them and all kinds of stuff. And it was just boring. And guess what? We've been sitting in those damn classrooms for most of our life. We're done. This is VR. Anything is possible, right? <laughs> That's the goal. Anything is possible. 
So what we found is over and over again that an open floor plan works. And this is an example of an open floor plan where you're on risers to lift up so you can see the slides and everybody has a chance to see because the room gets pretty crowded. But it's still an open. You're not confined to a chair. You don't have a bench or something there. It's more of an open plan. We found those work really, really well. So when you're considering designing an, um, or choosing a template for an event space, it really helps to have an open area so people are not sitting trying to force in chairs. Now, I decided to teach a writing course and here a creative writing um, workshop here in Altspace and I thought, well, I'm going to go through this open floor plan and I found this great space that was one of the templates that we just loved here for a long, long time here in Altspace that has this lovely campfire and you're in the jungle feel and I thought, oh man, if you're going to do write to prompts and share your stories and your poetry and stuff, what a fantastic way to do that is around a campfire. See, doesn't that have great feeling? I love the idea of the campfire. How, anybody else like that idea of storytelling around a campfire? Doesn't that work good? Yeah. Okay, it's an event space. It sucked. It was horrible because idiots wanted to jump into the campfire and go, Wee, look at me, I'm in the fire, I'm in the fire, I'm in the fire. Okay, that sucked. It was a constant distraction. And they'd wave their arms around and they'd be just bonkers. And it just didn't work. So I thought, okay, this isn't working. So what do I do? And for that particular event, thinking I knew everything. I took us back to a traditional open floor classroom. And it everything changed. People paid attention. They were there. They knew why they were there because there were signs on the wall that said, this is about writing. This is about creative writing. And everybody calmed down and we had very few problems because there was no fire pit for people to stand in. So I had to rethink, okay, we can create anything we want here in VR. But there's spaces that work and there's spaces that don't. And yet, sometimes going back to traditional works. So I had to change my mindset. We can't have chairs, can't have tables, those are uncomfortable um, because we just the way we move here in VR. But sometimes traditional feeling and environment can work and sometimes not. You have to play around with it, you have to rethink. But most of all, you have to put user experience first. No matter what, you have to put your audience first. Come on, we're in these weird, weird headsets. We're, we, they're hot, they're sweaty, they're stuck to our foreheads, or we're in 2D, which is even weirder. And we've got all these gears, and we've got batteries, and all kinds of stuff going on. And, and poor Zemo is just having a heck of a time with his kit. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so this is uncomfortable. So we need to take that into consideration when we choose an event spaces to make sure that they're familiar and comfortable for the audience, but they're also a, a intrinsically educational kind of space. So they need to be welcoming and embracing. So a traditional classroom just ain't quite making it, but we can find some compromises in between, but you need to think about your audience first, okay? And then your goals second, so that people feel comfortable in the space that you're in. It needs to be conducive to learning. Now, this is really a fascinating point. What does conducive to learning mean? I mean, seriously, what does that mean? That's a really good question. It took me a long time to figure out what that meant. Now, conducive to learning means that they have the distractions. Everything that is in the space has a purpose because things become really distracting. And so you have to make sure that they're not all, you know, that you, the people there are not all paying attention to something that you don't want them to pay attention to or going a place that you don't want them to go. You need to make sure that you have their full attention and whatever is there is just not quite distracting enough. But there's also what I call purposeful distractions, intentional distractions. And when people get in VR, now I'm waiting for it to happen in here, so watch out, Mark. <laughs> what happens here is, I don't know what it is. When people get in VR, they become cats. 
They need to be on the tallest thing in the room. They need to be perching on top of the, whatever is the tallest thing. And usually Mark has to fight off. He's doing the screw thing. So there's Jay is up there already. So, hey, JW. <laughs> there, so anyway, everybody tries to jump up on that, on the film crew thing, but that's for Mark. And so everybody has to be up on the tallest thing. If you know this, then what you can do is design or develop for it or keep that in mind. So we, I, in this, I often take classes to my, my, the last glacier that I built here. And I have purposeful and intentional spots for people to perch. So what happens is that the people who have the first energy, you have the fiddlers, don't you? I know there's a couple who are fiddlers, aren't you? Yeah. So what you do is you provide them fiddle spots. So give them places to perch. Now what happens is, honest to God, it's just hysterical. They'll jump up there and they'll go, look at me, look at me, look at me, woohoo, I'm on top. And they'll say, I, want, I get all the attention, I get all the attention. And you're thinking, ah, you're just where I want you. Excellent. Just stay there, burn off all that energy. And at the same time, you're going to focus in because you have a safe space. And finding a place that's safe for all the different modalities, all the personalities, all the needs here is really important. Especially if people are new to VR. You want that immersive experience to be a safe one. And so many of you, you'll see it, many of the template spaces that are built here in Altspace, which uses this thinking. There'll be balconies and back areas where people can still hear and they can still watch what's going up on the stage, but they can go back there and they can fiddle and they can move and they can do all that stuff. And you can just say, yep, you're just where I want you to be. It is incredibly empowering when you don't look at them as distracting, but you look at that as, pers as you know, as intentional and purposeful distractions. Does that sound like a good idea? You like that one? Give me some applause. Yeah. Some applause and hearts. Yay. All right. I love it. I love it. Okay. This is how we're rethinking design and development and rooms and space and event stuff in VR. So we need to leave those preconceived notions alone. We need to rethink our thinking. And I've done a ton of it over the last few years where I thought, well, it has to be this way. And then I realized I was full of crap. And I had to relearn and restudy and figure out what's going on. And so experiment. You, you all are pioneers. You are pioneers here. You are breaking the mold. And so risk and take some chances. But really watch when those preconceived notions get in the way. It really can just interfere. So let go and experiment and see what happens. When it comes to creating an educational space, signs, educational signs are critical. So if we do have time, I will take you to the last glacier and I have lots of signs there. It was created for the Earth Day celebration here in Alt Space last year. It still is, um, everybody loves this space. It's really a wonderful immersive space to learn about the changing glaciers, the impact of glaciers on our planet and the loss thereof, as well as the loss of our ice caves and everything else. And I have signs everywhere. That's great. But you know what really works is when an educational area is education enough and it doesn't need the signs. My friend Karen666 created this amazing immersive world called the ocean. Oh, I love this world. Fantastic. She also did it for Earth Day to show the pollution that is happening in the ocean. And it is amazing. Anybody been to see it? Give me some smileys if you've been to it already. Anybody been to it? Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely love this space. And there are no signs. It doesn't need to. It doesn't need signs. When you see an orca or a shark and it's got, you know, a lamp or a, or a, you know, some, something, you know, plastic shoved in its face. It doesn't need a sign. So a really great educational space can have the signs or doesn't have, you know, have, don't have the signs. Okay, I lied. I lied. I lied. It has a sign. Is that a good sign? Give me some hearts. Is that a good sign? Everybody found the sign? Give me some hearts. Yeah. Of all the signs, that's a good sign. 
I love that. That is one of the most powerful signs. So think about how you, how you can create these worlds, or better yet, have your students create these worlds as homework. Oh, see? Game changing. <laughs> because above all things, you need to break the rules, because honestly, these are not your traditional classrooms anymore. But I wanted to get you thinking about what the possibilities are and what are the lessons we've learned. I could spend five years talking about, well, five hours, okay, five hours talking about all the things we've learned about these event spaces and how they work for education. But I want you to remember that we need to start breaking the rules. Who says you can't have a meeting in a pirate village under the full moon? while flying come on while flying really that is so freaking cool i mean that is part of the magic is that we i have, we have the ability to take people flying and change their entire experience because we can there's no reason why we can't we can and it's just a beautiful thing absolutely a beautiful thing so, you know, why not take them flying and see what happens? And because, man, I just love this. You need to meet expectations and create wonder. Now, think about it. What do you know of recently that created wonder and linked the adult and child together? Think about it. What popular medium, right, that, that, that has been going for several years now and it's still working to connect the adult and child. How about Harry Potter? Yeah? The books, the movies of Harry Potter, they connect us, the child and the adult together. And anything that connect those two pieces together creates wonder, it creates magic. I mean, come on, every kid wants to, to have a wand and every adult really wants to be a wizard. Because we want to be a hero in our own mind. And we need to find ways of connecting those things. So th remember the child in you, not just, you know, some of you may be closer to being child, child than, ch you know, being a, ch a child than being an adult, but fine, reconnect with that. This is an amazing world by Daisy Shaw, and I hope you can see this in room two. And um, she has used video screens and mirrors and cameras and things to create this fantasyful, the lost world. It's totally immersive and it is absolutely amazing. And when I go in there, I am just gobsmacked. I just love it. And she's broken the rules because who said you have to have four walls and then add grass and add all these things. She's put up six video screens. There's actually one screen when the rest are done with mirrors, literally to create this feeling of this amazing, immersive world. She's breaking the rules. It's just beautiful. So push those limits and see what you can do and where you can go. I say over and over and over again, if you want to get someone's attention, you either need to show them something they've never seen before, never, never, never seen before, or show it to them in a way they've never seen it before. And guess what? VR is a way that many people have never seen it before. How's that for an idea? Yeah, I like that idea. Yay, yay. That's the magic and you're pioneers in this. You are making that difference. You are making that happen because we have the ability to show people things in a way they've never seen it before. So Mark, are you in room two? Oh, yeah. You want to try this? You want to try this? So you let's want to start bringing, let's give it a shot. All right, we're going to do something new that we haven't done before. And in two separate rooms, we are going to try to raise some animals from the dead. <laughs> 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 we're going to see if we can make this happen so that you can see this okay. make, doing things different. Again, we got to push those limits. All right, is this working? Okay, starting off with the horse. Right. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> All right, Sam, if you see a white slide, re enter. If anyone is not seeing the slides, re enter. All right, so, but 
Are you all seeing? I see some people are looking up. You all see the orca? And you see the seagull (laughs) overhead, straight up? You see the seagull? I hope somebody's getting a picture of this for me. There we go. And there's a horsey. (laughs) Don't get knocked over by the horsey. I made the horsey way too big. All right. So oh, there's a goal. Okay. Have <laughs> you got them all? Yay. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Please, people, take some pictures of these so that I can see of everybody looking at these. And let's have some great emojis for Mark and myself for being so talented to coordinate this. <laughs> so that everybody can see. I love it. All right. So, I mean, honestly, we just showed you something in a way you've never seen it before, so to speak. <laughs> So that's part of the magic of these things is that we do have this ability to bring in 3D objects. It is rather complicated to do it in an event like this. But I hosted for a long time, I really want to bring it back, a Doctor Who meetup in a Dalek. Come on. That is so cool. I made a theater inside of a Dalek. You know, why not? It's just this brilliant. You know, why not take a chance, have fun with this? You know, this is supposed to be fun. So, um, but also, I cannot say, I mean, we're having fun, but this is the truth. Lead, let students lead by example, honestly. Make it acceptable for them to do their homework in 3D and find a way to share it with you. They can build a world and share the link to the world with you. They, you know, help. There's a Matt Cook and the Virtual World Society has a school that they are working with in um, Seattle where they're teaching the after school engineering club, teaching them VR and how to use it. And then that club is teaching the teachers how to use it. And then the teachers they are doing a special um, you know, quarter, a short quarter where they're teaching the students how to use VR, but the teachers were taught by the students. Okay, that is freaking awesome! But, you know, find ways to let the students be the ones who build the worlds and see what happens with it because it's amazing to see what happens. And I want to just say that we're teaming up, Educators in VR is teaming up with Earth Day celebration here at Alt Space. And we don't have much time. That's coming up, what, in March, I think it is? I can't remember. And that is we need people to build worlds here there's a world building meetup every tuesday here in alt space that's on the calendar to learn how to build some very simple worlds either with a world building kit or with unity whatever you want to do um and get your students to do it and help build worlds earth day is april 22nd okay beautiful thank you jay and i love it when a team helps me out and now is not too soon have your students build some some wonderful worlds here in alt space that we can all share together for Earth Day. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh man, that would be so cool to have whole classroom projects or individual student projects. That would be awesome. And you share that with them. I love it. Now, Alt Space VR allows for the import of Unity and 3D assets in addition to the world building assets that you're seeing here with the orca and the seagull and the horse. Um, they're part of the featured kits that you can request to have added to your system. But it allows the import of Unity in these things. And what I love are people who are breaking rules. This is my friend H and I will say who's, who at a challenge I gave him, can you, can you rock my virtual world? <laughs> I said, can we cause an earthquake here in Altspace? And you know what? He said, sure, why not? And he did. So he built this earthquake machine and it literally shakes everything. And you, you actually slide down the hillside. It's just amazing. Because I asked, can you? It's the old what if question. Trigger imagination. What if? See if you can do it. See if you can solve that problem. You know, find a way. (coughs) Excuse me. You can explore science and nature here in so many different ways. I can't even count. You can set up galleries and exhibits with your students to have their artwork in VR brought in. You can build theaters or use existing theater spaces to host plays and skits and theater. Check out Improv Night here. There's also center stage and open mic night and see the talent. 
that people are doing here, sharing their talent in VR, and see what you can do with your students to do much the same thing. You can build a museum. This is part of the uh, starting area between two of the buildings in my family history and genealogy museum. You can find it right there on the, if you search in the, um, on the website, you can find that and go exploring. Um, I had, this was the first museum in Altspace, um, but somebody else made theirs public before I did. I don't care. But anyway, there's an amazing um, computer game. Uh, it's the, isn't it the Atari, Atar, no, it's not the Atari. What's, I've forgotten the world, word, uh, Jay would know. What's, what's the name of the museum by, that Bart did? Message me. But anyway, so just type in museum. See what happens. Nintendo Museum, that's it. Thank you, Jay. And so the Nintendo Museum, it's awesome. All built with just odd and end world pets. I love it. So museums, galleries. My friend Callie's done this amazing digital uh, 3D gallery of some digital um, work that he's done in Blender and Tilt Brush and I don't know what other tools that he's been using. We have other people who've done great stuff. You can explore local landmarks. Notre Dame is here. I don't think the inside is in this model, but the outside is, so you can look at it from the architecture. There's this one I just found out a couple days ago, needs to be repaired, but there's a beautiful synagogue here. And um, so the world didn't quite make the last update, but there's a beautiful synagogue that is here by Pox. So, you know, there's all kinds of fantastic historical places. And my friend Ancient, I won't say, built the Celix Cathedral, so you can just search for cathedral. This is built with programming. He created a repeating algorithm that, re that generates this in Unity with programming. No assets, no things. It's a math problem. I love it, and it is spectacular. Love this thing. So take advantage you know, of the, um, here in Altspace, there's the Unity uploader. You can work with Unity and bring things in through that. You can also work with the drag and drop um, assets like what you see with the orca and the horse. <laughs> All right, Mark, I think I'm getting tired of looking at the horse. So I'm going to get rid of the horse. And um, you can also, okay, I'm going to leave the seagull. But I love the seagull. All right, so the seagull's up above if ever, anybody missed it. All right, and so experiment because you can do whatever you want to. When, when you're creating a world that is private and not featured for the general public, you can do whatever you want to with it. If you're going to make it public and put it into the whole catalog of alt space worlds, there are, there are some criteria because it must be mobile friendly. But you can experiment and have your students experiment with all kinds of different things. And yes, GLTF um, assets, absolutely, you can bring those in. Wonder, yep, right into Altspace through the Unity uploader. So yes, you can. All right. So now when it comes to presenting, I don't know what it is with about us teachers and those damn slides. We're into, I mean, honestly, projectors, overhead projectors, and all the stuff we want to put up on the screen and videos and all that business. I'm going to cover this really briefly because I want to answer your questions and hopefully take you to a couple worlds so that you can see what the, some ideal worlds look like that are educational and immersive. So this is what my computer screen kind of looks like right now. I have three monitors. I want three more. <laughs> anyway, I'm a monitor hog. I love monitors, and I need to figure out a way to get three more. So I have my slides control on one, and I have alt space in the middle, and then scripts or notes or whatever, or Discord is open on the other monitor. Now, you don't have to do this. I'm just, I'm okay, I'm a geek. I'm a nerd. But when you're controlling slides, you need to have a way to control them, and you can control them through 2D, um, like I'm presenting right now. Um, and, or you can do through a variety of other ways. So let's cover this really quickly. I have a dedicated, so if the screen is black for you or white for you, please re-enter. Means you're in a mobile device, you need to re-enter, and that usually clears it up. So go to your big circle with a triangle in it and re-enter. So Altspace and most VR platforms support only slides.com or Google Slides. There's pros and cons to using both. Slides.com has the most options when it comes to controlling the slides and the greatest stability right now in VR. All right, so I have a whole program dedicated to this because it's complex, but I'm going to skip it and go right to just some of the basics. You can 
put your notes or control the slides right there in your personal browser. So this is where Rel loses their audience and everybody starts watching porn. So if you click that web button right next to your big circle with a triangle on it, it opens up a personal browser. Do know that if you're in a mobile device like a Quest or a Go or a uh, Samsung Gear, it might cause you to crash in this event space. But that would allow you to then open up your slides, slide deck and control it from there, or you can have your notes or outlines or anything else, script and stuff that you need in there. Again, if you cannot see the slides, please re-enter the space. If you're going to host an event in Altspace, a big event, we're not talking about a small classroom, but even if it's a small classroom, please contact the events team at Altspace. They are super heroes. I love them. They are there to help answer your questions, to help you make your event, educational or otherwise, a great success, okay? You can find out more information on creating events at that website. And just go to Altspace is all you need to do. Or now we have the Info Zone. You can check that out in the Info Zone. You can also look for anyone who has a green border around their name tag, like JW over there, and we have Mark up in the, in the audience, and Sirenity over here in the corner in room one, and wherever else you happen to find them, myself included. And it means that we're one of the helpful people here in Altspace. In other words, it means we have calluses and bruises for, from presenting events. <laughs> we know how it works. All right, so we can help you as well. You can find more information at help.vr.com because that for digging into some of the event how-to information. All right, I'm going to open up the floor here for some quick questions, and then I'm going to take you on a quick tour of how this works. So I'm going to turn on the question queue. And I just love the, I just want to take a second to say thank you to everyone's here. And if you are a speaker at the, Prince is coming up, the International Summit next week, ah! uh, give us some heart. If you're a speaker at the conference, give us some hearts. Yeah, I love it. If you're going to be volunteering, we still need volunteers. Give me some clapping. How about some applause if you're a volunteer? Oh, I love the volunteers. I love it, I love it, I love it. So make sure, if you are not a volunteer, that you head over to educatorsinvr.com and we have a form there for you to fill out. We have a private training session tomorrow in the morning PST in the afternoon Eastern time and who knows, uh, I think it's evening for European times. So get that form filled out so you can show up for our event and that will you know give you more information. All right, I'm gonna do some quick questions and then we're going to go on a tour. So, Camilo, Hello. you're Hello. up. Hi, Camilo. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hi. How can we help? How Hello. can I? I'm question Camilo. can I answer? Hello. Hello. You have a question? Huh? No. Sorry, I'm just trying to understand where I am. Okay. <laughs> it's you're an in... interesting space. Okay. Thank you. Well, you're at an educators in VR event and a workshop and uh, so we're looking for questions so I see you're pushing all the buttons so Sirenity you have a question yeah can you hear me yes I can here I am Hi, my Hooray. Yay. <laughs> I was at the event tomorrow I've got it in my diary but um, it's not on the event pages or anything so I wonder how people access the volunteers okay. meet tomorrow Okay, not the place to add, to answer, but I will answer for because we have so many volunteers. You should it should show up. We'll make sure under events my events and the right. link is also available in the volunteer kit and um, other places. So uh, you can address my events. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, anyone else has a question? So, I Ultras Claudio? Yeah. Yeah, there Hi. you are. You have a question. Hi. Hi. Uh, uh, what kind uh, of the. <laughs> I, I don't know how to save because I'm trying this. Uh... 
Just, just ask. <laughs> yeah. All right, and, what do you want to um, know? If you want to organize uh, events uh, like this, uh, what uh, we have to do? So you hit that big circle with a triangle on it. You go to yeah. events. You hit the button that says create an event. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> it's easy. I, I do recommend <laughs> that you create an event um, at altvr.com because there's a lot of typing involved. But so, yay. So welcome. Oops, I'm sorry. I, I took you off air accidentally. Did you have another part of the question? Okay. Guess not. Okay. All right, Jim, you're on. Hi, Jim. Hi, Rel. Hi, you're one of our speakers. Yeah, I'm actually working 2D mode for the first time. So. It's oh, fun. isn't that, that fun? Yeah, that's my practice for. <laughs> So my question is, is there a uh, library of um, either public domain or Creative Commons licensed v, uh, VR assets that could be pulled in via the Unity uploader? Yes, there's a, there's a bunch at the um, Altspace store, at Altspace <laughs> Unity store. Um, and there's a ton of them all over the place. And we also are having some speakers next week that are gonna talk about how to find some of that free and licensed um, content as well. Many, many sources. Like Yay. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thanks. Love it. Okay. So now we have Gray. You're on. How can I help you? So um, with most of the things, would you have to do all of it on VR? Or could uh, some of it be on computer? Like, could you, let's say, find a way to, like, if we're using a Chromebook, could we uh, like download Windows and be able to use that processing unit to use the Google Drive and stuff? Because my Chromebook doesn't mo work with most of the stuff that you talked about that we could use. Uh, well, then this looks like you already had the answer. Um, I don't know anything about Chromebook. Um, I do know that you can you work you have to work with Unity with Windows environment, and then um, but I don't I don't you know I don't know what the power of your Chromebook is and but you need to have a you know a decent computer, but I've seen people do it with just a really simple Windows Windows laptop, and uh, but you do need to have you know it is Windows based for you know uh, getting that up into Alt Space, and so yeah so the answer is yes but the answer is I don't know because I don't know. What your Chromebook is capable of. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Good question. I wish I knew. All right, so let's see here who is next here. All right, I'm going to do one more question and then I'd like to take you because we can answer more questions, but I'd love to take you to um, a couple interesting worlds. All right, so let's see. Uh, Camilo, you're my last one to bring you back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, a, I have a question. I mean, mm -hmm. how is it possible to work with that? I mean, should be really nice to make it a real job. But for us, it's really an investment now. So do you know what's the best way or the best field in which to create events? Oh, to create an event or to build the fields? Unity? I mean, the argument. OK. Um... I'm trying to understand your question. Um, so if you're already a teacher and you're being paid and you want to expand into VR, you need to get permission from your school and then you can do it. If you want to be paid to present workshops yeah. and trainings and classes, many people have paid courses that they teach. Um, computer programming and uh, uh, like JavaScript and, and um, C sharp and whatnot are being taught by people who are being paid, and okay, so, so programming. So programming things, but there's other things. There's V coaching. There's V training. There's many people who are doctors, like psychologists, that have um, actually meet with patients. So they're paid. Meet with patients in VR. 
because they have patients from all over the world or they're people with anxiety disorders and so this is a part of their training as they bring them in and do trainings and preparation and, and you know phobia things it's it's a it's that's not what this event is about because I could talk for 20 hours about the potential for VR in all of those worlds and all those different industries um, but uh, it, because there's more than just alt space that are doing things. In fact, let me let me end with this, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna take people to a world because that's a really good question. In a way, is that um, the winner of this year's um, Education VR Award was Make Real and Vodafone, and they won for creating a simulation app for the workers who work on cell phone towers. Now think about where cell phone towers are found. They're found out on these very tall, tall towers, all in the countryside. The towers on top of skyscrapers. Yeah, so they not only have to go to the top of a building, but then they have to go up from the roof of a skyscraper. And they've created the simulation they were the crew was in here who developed it behind it. Um, we're here for an ask me anything question um, just a couple weeks ago here in all space and it was amazing how they were able to use volumetrics and computer programming and all this stuff to try to you know and design work to create a realistic simulation for the workers to practice in VR up there. There are people who are doing job interviews in VR and, and actually passing through the use of some AI technology or actually interviewing potential employees in virtual reality. Many, many ways of doing that. So, you know, I can only address how to bring it here into alt space, into general VR um, for something that's fairly simple. But at the International Summit, we'll have people uh, there's a couple, they were just on earlier today doing a quick little demo, um, who are teaching dance lessons with full body suits in VR for partner dancing. They're doing salsa and all kinds of fun things. I love it! It's, you know, it's just up to your imagination to see what's possible. All right, so I forgot about room two. The first world that we're going to go to yeah, I forgot to put a teleporter in there. Okay, um, is is actually a world that very few people can get out. I'm gonna first take everybody to Spirit Cave. So, Mark, you have a, you favorited Spirit Cave, haven't you? Yes, Mark. I hope so. I hope so. All right. So, I'm gonna <laughs> first go to Spirit Cave and teach everyone to fly very quickly, so you can see that. And, um, and everybody can join us, and then we're going to go to some other worlds, but then we'll all be in the same room. Okay, so hopefully he has Spirit Cave on his list. And I want to thank everybody and our mods and everywhere. The event space is closed, so we're not going to worry about that. And I'm going to thumb through all of my stuff. And we're going to this place that was this special world that was created by Proxide, who's one of our great world builders here. And it's just an example of the potential. And um, I'm going to get to it. There it is. Okay. And I'm going to throw a portal. And so if you'd like to join us, you can hang here if you want, but we're going to be gone. So this portal is going to make a loud noise, and I want to have, let me move forward. I want everybody to click on it in the center. Now, this is a public space, so be aware. And Mark's going to do this the same in room two. I uh, hope. JW has got it in room two. Oh, excellent, JW. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, when we get there, do know that it is other people may be joining us. If, if the portal does not work, please go to, everybody go to, to, you can do this now while you're tethered, go to the big circle with a triangle on it. Go to general, or sorry, to settings. General and flip on enable worlds beta. Settings, general, enable worlds beta. It will add a tab at the bottom called worlds and you can find us under popular as soon as we get there. All right, everybody be with me. I'm going to unmute everybody. All right, give me some, some emojis. Everybody with me, ready to go. We're going into the world. All right, hit confirm, let's go.
phone in here. Isn't that cool? You can see the movement mm. under the ground. All right. So I'm going to teach you how to fly here. We're going to do a quick flying, and then we're going to head to another world to just show you a comparison. This is called Spirit Cave. If you want to save it, you can go to your big circle menu, Worlds, and then favorite this. Find this under most po under popular. To fly, hit that, that circle with a triangle on it. Go, go to settings, input, flip on fly. Settings, excuse me, input, flip on fly. Close your menu, look up and walk up. Settings, input, flip on fly. Close your menu, look up and walk up. Got it? Got it, Jim? Settings in your, 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 your there. Yeah, settings. Okay. Oh, you hold down the right button on your mouse and look up. No, hold down your right right mouse. We don't let go and tilt your head up. Oh, you have a trackball. Will you still have a right click? Hold down the right. Click and then move your trackball and look up. Oh. There, there you go. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, head up and meet me up, up above in one of these anemones. Hey, Fox. Oops. Hey, Serenity. Can you mute yourself? Hey. Oh, I'm so loud. I'm so sorry. I couldn't tell how loud I was. It goes. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, I'm experimenting because I'm going to have to do a lot of 2D stuff next week. Yeah, yeah. so just <sighs> mute yourself because the table just vibrates into your microphone. <laughs> it's, it's on the arm of my chair actually, but I know what you mean. <laughs> oh, Kumi's complaining at me as well. Yeah. <laughs> is it really loud? It is. It goes... Like really 